the Helicon Tex Bergen backpack. Now, I've had this now for two and a half, three years, and from day one, I've liked it. I've used it on day walks, I've used it on overnighters, I've used it on multi day walks. Uh, I don't use it, on the longest walk I used it for was over six days. Six days, five nights, and that had everything I needed, I was able to carry, and a little bit more. Now I've got one, two, three different style pouches I've added to the pack, which for me works very well. So I'm just heading to one of the shelters on the Bibbleman track, so when I get there, I'll grab one of the uh, picnic bench tables away from the actual shelter, and I'll show you it. show you first is what I've got on the shoulder straps and just give you an idea of what I use uh, these pouches and things for. Uh, let's lift it up. The first thing you'll probably notice is I've got two Navtel pouches. Now all the pouches on here are from Helicon Tex. So, nut tail pouches. We've got a small pocket at the front, which is easily big enough for my spot EPUB. I get my fingers down there properly. Plenty of room. On this side, I've got my car keys and electric cables. On the inside, the second pockets, I've got my wallet in, wallet in that one for now but a normal 20 milliamp uh, battery pack, the anchors, will fit in these. And here's my phone in a one of them cases, so instead of it breaking, it bounces. Let's see Samsung S23. So that fits in there nice. And these pockets, I've got a nice soft inner, so if you are gonna be putting things like this, they're going to be protective, they're not going to be scratched. Now at times I use this side and I'll put all my little batteries from my other camera I've got. Or I can even fit with what I'm using now, all the bits for that in here. And that's the Pocket, no, DJI Action 2 camera, which is only a small one but it's really nice. I've got two like D-ring carabiners and the reason I use these is because with the, the flat side that sits nice in the web in there and I'm carrying my hydro pack one litre uh, which as you can see squashes down or get it off and that'll hold a litre squash it back in Do the lid back up. But no, that sits really nice on there. And I've got on my watch on the opposite side, but I can easily put a second canteen on there, which will allow it to uh, expand the pack so I can carry more water or other things hanging from there. The next one, which I've actually got on my chest strap, and on the chest strap, you've got where the elastic is for expansion and the actual chest strap here. Now I've got it attached in between those two because when I'm taking it off, that means it's protected, it's not going to fall off. And that's the little emergency compass pouch. So I've got the sun toe in there at the moment. The spot tracker EPER, which I've got here, actually fits nice in that with room to spare. A normal like silver compass. These are just, and you can have your silver compass in that too. You can fit a little emergency fire kit in one of these little pouches. They're really handy. 
that's the front which is the two carabiners one on either side the little emergency compass pouch and the two nav tail pouches now that means these small amounts you can see here it doesn't look like much but when you're actually putting it in a pack which is between 18 and 22 or yeah between 18 and 22 and a bit litres that opens up for you being able to carry more food inside your pack or I don't know anything you want so you, uh, uh, use it longer throughout the season without having to strap to the outsides so you can carry smaller lighter sleeping bags or blankets uh, less clothing in the summer now the other thing I've added to the pack both the top and bottom are the actual waist straps of the pouches I've got on the back here or on the front whichever way you look at it and all I've done is put them through the top so I can actually strap to the top of my pack and I've got the same on the bottom here so I can strap to the bottom so just with these one two three pouch, small pouches and the straps to go on bottom and top I could probably carry another equivalent to 20 30 litre packs worth like the uh, sleeping bag or my tent or one of the bivvies or any gear now the other pouches I have on this I've got four of them and what I use them for I'll give you a quick look and they are the Helicontex semi pouch hence these are the waist straps I didn't need them so I just modified them so they fit up here so we've got one there two three and four and now they, they fit just nice so it uses all the actual webbing on the pack, on the pack here so we've got nowhere to attach down in between but that's not necessary because we've got the pockets here for the smaller stuff which we'll show you in a moment so let me come over here so in this first one this is my snake bite kit which is three compression bandages and a triangular bandage there and I think I've got the instructions in there just in case I need them and they fit fantastic now all the gear in here I've got I've got from uh, survival supplies so if you're here in Australia I'll put links down below so you can go down there and go and have a look they are affiliate links it won't cost you any more it just means I'll get a tiny little amount which helps me buy more gear to go out and do reviews and it helps the channel to continue the next one is my basic first aid kit again I've got the smaller bandages little bits and bobs tweezers band-aids uh, more bits and bobs in the front bit here I've actually got my sharpening stone which sits in here that's a DC4 and I've got room for even more to go in there so, what have I got in there at the moment I think, yeah I've got to fix them all in there which is great for all blisters or hot spots stopping them any worse or even helping to uh, stitch wounds up yeah, that's really good for that okay the next one is my fire kit now I've got plenty of room in this one to spare and to add to now in the front pocket here I got a there's no lens just a little on little cheap one does the job great if you're getting ticks or splinters helps you get them out we're using the tweezers in here I've got some more fire lighter here Let's get it back in I've usually got some uh, my brain's turned off when I remember I'll mention it so I've got this Scout Mark II from Helicon in here, the uh, fire kit and I've also added in there flint and steel so just a little fire block cotton wool 
and a little striker and that sits in there quite nice now that if I remember right Let me get straps caught up somewhere. There it is. Plug it. Come on, thank you, Tom. That's caught on this side. <laughs> the emergency pouch here. The little compass emergency pouch. Let's have a look to show you. And that. Oh, yep, yeah, that slides in there nice and snug so you can even carry your fire kit in the second one of these if you wish oh I'm making a mess of this okay put that back in there so again the savvy Fatwood, that's what I was thinking of. I can usually get, I've got a piece of fatwood that sits at the bottom, main one, and a little small piece that sits in one of the pockets here. I've got an extra lighter in here, and just different things you can add to it. And as you can see, we've got plenty of room beside that. So, great little pouches for your fire kits. I did do a review and showed this fire kit, uh, this pouch as a fire kit. I'll put a link up here if you want to go and look at it or down in the description might be better so you can watch this thing going up. On this side my basic hygiene kit which is a small microfiber towel, a little bar of soap, some sanitizer, uh, toothbrush, sanitizer in there I've got my actual toothpaste in with that little mini one. These are them little uh, face cloths the little tab ones where you add a little bit of water and they expand and they open up. Great little things, I really love them. Yes, uh, actually no, I've got my toothpaste down at the bottom, so a bigger one now. And I've got just got the medium, oh, they call it, it's not the tester one, it's the small one and it fits just nice at the bottom of this pouch. So the reason I've got these here, not only to give room, is I don't have to grab everything out of my pouch if I want to just freshen up, or if I want to get a fire going if I need a bit of first aid there and again I've got a snake bite so it's all easy access and at the front again the compass is at the front so I've got the, the spot there the tracker the e-perb in there my phone in there if I wanted to use electronic maps it's just so many ways to use this and just by doing all this so far there's a lot of room that I've saved from here. Now in this side pouch here, which is stitched on, I have my cup kit, which is the Avenue Solo, and I've got my water filtration, which is the Soya Mini, was it the Soya Squeeze? One or the other, I've got one, each of those. I've got one in here with the actual pouch, uh, pouch to put the water in and filter through into my bottle, which is over here. Now, Going behind here, you can fit, as you can see, an axe, and that goes all the way through and down behind the actual stitched on pouch. And this is the Helco Works, and it's just like a little camp axe. So I'll put that in here so you can see what will fit. So let's get that back in there, out the way, go back down there. Is it caught on the leather strap? There you go, get down. Oxy to me can. In there. Nice and steady, nice and real good. And another one I'll show you which I brought out with me today to show you is the more little camp packs. Now a lot of pouches and stuff have difficulty because of the angle of this. So that's why I brought it out to show you that it just go all the way down and it sits nice with the blade pointing backwards. It's saying there, I've got the blade pointing back, and that's hence it helps out with not having another bit of webbing to go here or using the webbing, and there's not some here to use because that allows the actual blade of the axe just to sit nice between the two pouches there. Okay, we've got two stitching full length down, same length as these pouches, 
tie the stuff at the bottom and let's open this and make it easier to get to and show you how we do 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 Right, Morg knife, sits in there, real nice, room for, I don't know, most knives, most uh, brush knives will fit down there. On this side, let's get it out, the Baco Laplander saw, that's had a, a good workout over the years. So again, that fits in there, nice. The reason I've got the knife in there is one, to show you, and two, uh, if you don't want to carry it on your, your, your hip, you can carry it on here, or in here out of sight. Like if you're doing a Bilbleman track and you want your knife in there, go in there, drop the little pouch down, it's out of sight so people aren't going to be panicking and worrying. It's the same with the saw. When the pouch is down and the lid's shut and the strap's over, that's all hidden out of sight. Okay, I've got the our blood group on the panel here on your hook and loop panel. So that's easy if anybody happens to me and they see that they know what blood group I am. So it's a handy thing to have just in case, so the information is there. Very basic information, but the information is there. Now, in this pou pouch, I have my food. Now, I've got dehydrated food in there, and I have, if I remember, I've got about, let's have a look. Oh yeah, I've got them in the actual TCF pack, pouch to protect them all. I've got about four days worth of food in the original packaging. Then when you buy these dehydrated ones, they come in the big packs like this. So I've got about eight, yeah, I've squashed about eight of them in there. Now what I normally do is I remove them from the packaging when I go and put them in smaller Ziploc bags. And the amount of room you save by doing that, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because you're going to save about so if, I, if I've got six in there, if I swap them down into the ziplocks, I can get on average nine or ten in there, and sometimes actually more. To be, I took when I did the five days, I took yeah, I got fourteen meals in that when I took them out of the actual uh, dehydrated packaging and put them in the little ziplocks, to saving space. So I've made a video sh just showing what I did there and the difference it made. Again, I'll put the link down in the description for you. Now, this pouch, I have a poncho. I think it's the poncho in here, so normally I've got, oh no, I've got my ditty bags in here at the moment. The poncho's inside, because we're in summer here. So I've got a ditty bag there, and that's got cords in there, power cord, all different bits and bobs. This one is my poop kit which has got my little sh uh, little shovel in there, it's got toilet roll in there, it's got tissues in there. So that sits in there nice. It's also, I've also got uh, pegs in there. I always carry at least six pegs, tent pegs, or stakes, whatever you want to call them. So whenever I get uh, a tent, Adding the actual tent, I'm not going to need as many as the pegs that come with it because I'm also already carrying them. Or if I'm using a bivy, it makes very little difference just having the bivy in there, the type that you have to peg down with the hoop tom. Uh, yeah, there's always something there because I've, I've got the puncher inside because I normally carry one of these. The puncher inside so I can use that as a shelter. Uh, I don't even have to carry the, the bivy bag because the poncho I carry can be turned into like a bivy bag, uh, a waterproof protection over the top of your sleeping bag. In the top here, it's a Vagabond seat pad. 
which isn't the biggest but it saves your ass on some of these rocks and wood and stumps and it keeps your bum dry and if you're doing stuff you can use it as a nail pad so that's sitting in the top there so basically that's everything on the outside that I need and a poncho like I said is normally on one of these packs here so I didn't think about packing this pocket to scrap what I normally carry and I'll throw it in. Yeah, we've got a small internal pocket here. And in there, I've got my glasses cates, and that's got my head torch in there to save space. And my merino beanie. So, like I said, I haven't organised it properly, I just shoved everything in. So if I took my time and organised it, I would probably end up with more space in here. But as you can see, <laughs> I've got room still in here to expand. I'm only using up to about the 18 metre point. So, little see the summit, ultralight, that's the summit, it's only about 1.1 R value. Very comfortable, right, great for the summer here. There's my poncho, which is the uh, Helicontex Poncho US model. So that I can turn into a, a tarp to give me shelter. I can wear it as a poncho to keep dry and it will actually cover my backpack. I can use it as a bivy bag. Like I said, I can clip these sides together and put my sleeping bag in it and keep dry and even warmer. Pillow. Just shove the sleeping bag in. And this is the jungle sleeping bag from Helicontex. And in this one, which I like is great for the summer, it's got a built-in bug net. So I just zip that, get inside, no bugs can get to me. And it's rated to about 7 degrees centigrade. So it's not really a winter one, but when you Adding a bivy over that, we're looking at that would probably got to rating it down to, I'd say about three, two, three degrees centigrade, depending on you as a person and what bivy bag you're using. Unzip it, use it as a blanket. So, yeah, pretty, pretty nice. And what else I've got left in here? That's the Special Forces bivy, which does go down even smaller. Uh, probably not even smallest. Probably just a little bit bigger than a, a baseball. And I've got a change of clothes at the bottom, which is a pair of pants, another shirt, jocks, socks. So if I needed them, they're there. Now all this, like I said, this last four or five days, comfortable out in the bush, no hassle at all. So push that back down to the bottom. I wouldn't even need to carry that if I'm using the uh, the poncho. But yep, yeah, these sleeping bags, the six knockback ones, has a waterproof or water resistant cover on them. So if they get a little bit of rain or water on them, you're going to be okay. And as you can see, I'm just shoving it in. I've got the point at the back for my hydration filter, uh, bottle if I want to. Still room in there, even with all this, for a three litre hydration fork to go in there. Hydration ports on either side for your pipe to come out. Maybe left or right handed or for your preference. There's the expansion bit, we put adding more in there. And the lid will still come over and cover that. So, plenty of room. <coughs> And if you're like me, I, I'm not over keen on putting too much in there and expanding that because I normally just carry my jacket. My jacket will go over that. That will flip over and close and hold my jacket in place. And it's also a big enough space there to get my down jacket in there and keep it all covered up because it just squashes in there just nice. My fleece jackets, no, they, they stick out. 
It's something that you can condense down like a down jacket. It just sits in there. Lovely it is. And again, we're having a poncho and using a poncho, even if I had the fleece jacket hanging out and it was raining, I could just throw the poncho over and it would cover all that nice and easy, plenty of room. So that's the Helicon Tex Bergen. And the three different pouches I use on it, totaling, what's that, totaling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've added seven pouches to a little 18 litre backpack and I've you added the straps from the seven pouches, the waist belts. So that's it, the Helicon Tex Bourbon and how I use it and what possibilities and ways that you could use it. I'm not saying that you have to use it the same way as myself, it's just a video to give you some ideas and get your imagination going and adapt your pack to suit you. Take no notice of what anyone else says. If they say do it this way, you have to do it that way, that way's wrong. Ignore it. If it works for you, it's right for you, so it's right. If it doesn't work for you, then it's not right for you. That's, that's as simple as it goes. But each time I go out, different walks, different length walks, different times of the year, what I put in these pouches, the way I use them, the way I use the pack, it changes every single time. So if I wanted to just go for a long weekend and use MREs, about five or six MREs will fit in there quite nice. That's it, my canteen's in there, my mug's in there, that's the Evernew Solo, like I said. That's the mug, the actual pot itself, 750ml, the gas canisters in there, my gas stove's in there, my folding forks in there, or folding spoon I've actually got in there at the moment, I've got my water filtration in there. I'm actually carrying extra, like I said, I've got the two axes I'm carrying in here. Normally when I just go brush, if I'm on the bibble and track or something, I'll just carry a knife and my saw just in case. And it's ideal for having a fire when you're allowed to have, or when they, they there's times of the year that you don't like you to have fires on the bibble and track because of how dry it gets and how dangerous it can be. If a spark hits something wrong, it'll just set the whole brush on fire. So when it's not that dry and it's safe to have your fires, it's, it's great, the Bill Woman track. And hence, I've got my fire kit there, I've got the, the saw there so I can cut wood. I've got one of my knives. I don't normally carry this knife with me at the moment. I've been used testing it out over days and stuff. And the uh, more Companion Heaven Duty, I've just done a review on the other week, so I'll put a link to that also. That knife, I battered that. I gave it a good hammering over the last couple of three years. So go and have a look at that. It's just a simple video showing you it, explaining to you how I've used it and showing you the condition it is after so long of not cleaning it. it it's an, an amazing little knife. So go and have a look. Uh, yeah, I've got another proper good heavy duty bush knife which I've been testing out. So by the time I've got through that I might actually make a video just showing you that one, just so you know what I'm using and what's out there. But maybe in two or three years after I've used it and hammered it and given it a good battering, I'll go over it again and show you how it's getting on. So like I said, that's the Bergen and the pouches. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have and you're already a subscriber, I'd like to thank you very much. And if you're not already a subscriber, go down below, click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell next to it and select all and hit that thumbs up button.